guys, it's Carbot Rhino, you're watching Play It Right, and I'm here to teach you the rules of a very special two-player game, it's Construction Boom. Construction Boom is a game that takes place on the small and beautiful island of Malta, where constructing new buildings is a tricky game on its own. The terrain is scarce and the competition is ruthless. So Construction Boom is a two-player game where you're playing as a real estate contractor on the island of Malta. It's turn-based, it's competitive, and you win by making the most money. You can already check the game out on the website as it's available for free to print and play and it will also launch on Kickstarter very soon. So let's have a look inside. The game consists mainly of tile cards with which you'll be building your structures. You've got three different materials, old, modern and cheap, and three different types of tiles of each material, the ground tiles, the tier tiles and the roof tiles. Each round in Construction Boom has two phases. The first phase is the contract phase, in which you'll be trying to get a construction contract by outbidding your opponent. If you do get the contract, you'll be the contractor for the round, and the other player will take the role of the saboteur. Then we go to the construction phase, in which the two players will take turns playing their tiles. The contractor trying to fulfill their contract by constructing specific type of buildings and the saboteur trying to sabotage them. After this is done, the round is scored and the contractor earns money for the contract or they may very well also lose money if they haven't fulfilled it. The game lasts for several rounds, you can play as much as you want, but four rounds is the suggested standard. The winner will be the player with the most money. So this was a brief overview of the game, let's have a look at each phase in detail and let's start with the setup. To start, you randomly pick three tiles of the ground type, making sure they're not all of the same material, and you place them face up between the two players. The rest of the deck is shuffled and you deal 10 tiles randomly to each player. The rest of the tiles won't be used in this round, so you can put them aside and you're ready to start the round. Each round starts with the contract phase. Both players take a good look at their 10 cards secretly. How many tiles of each material do I have? How many roof tiles? How many ground tiles? And so on. Apart from the material and the type of tile, on your cards you'll see also the weight of the tile. The ground tiles don't have any weight depicted as they will always go on the ground. So this is only important for the roof and the tier tiles as they will go on top of other tiles. Instead, the ground tiles display their capacity for carrying weight. When both players are done examining their tiles, then they will start negotiating about who should be the contractor. One of the players randomly starts and announces their first bid. When you bid for a contract, you're basically committing that at the end of the round, there will be in play at least a specific number of tiles of one type of material, so either old, cheap or modern. It does not matter where these tiles are or if they are adjacent, this is Malta, after all. If you guys been to the island, then you'll know what I mean. The important thing is that the tiles are there. So let's say that I start and I bid two modern. So this means that I'm committing that there will be in play at least two tiles of modern material at the end of the round. Then the other player decides whether they would like to raise the previous bid or accept the current bid or double it. If they choose to raise it, then they're actually trying to become the contractor of the round or maybe they don't want to let their opponent get away with an easy contract to fulfill, so they need to bid higher. There is a specific sequence of how the bids go from lower to higher. Old is lower than modern and modern is lower than cheap. So the lowest you can bid is one old. The other player can bid anything from one modern upwards to outbid it. So following my fictional example where I bid to modern, my opponent could bid to cheap. Then I look at my cards again and decide to raise the bid and say three old. My opponent looks at their cards and maybe thinking that they can't promise anything higher than that and maybe also thinking that they would like to see me fail fulfilling my contract, they can either accept the bid 
or double it. In either case, I would be the contractor for the round and my opponent would be the saboteur trying to sabotage my contract plans. If they choose to double the bid, it means that they think that the contract is impossible to fulfill and thus the final score should be double. We'll see how scoring works later on in the video, but in general, fulfilling a contract gives you positive points and not fulfilling a contract gives you a penalty of negative points. So if you're a saboteur and you're doubling, that means that your opponent might get double the negative points of the penalty, but you're also running the risk of them fulfilling the contract and getting double the positive points. So when the contract is accepted, then we'll have a contractor and a saboteur for the round and we can move on to the construction phase. Both players reveal their 10 cards by laying them out face up in front of them and the contractor is the first to play. Players will take turns placing tiles, but they can also pass their turn. If at any point during the game both players pass consecutively, then the round is over and the score is calculated. So what are the rules for placing your tiles in Construction Boom? As we already saw, we start the game with three ground tiles randomly placed on the table. No other type of tile can be placed on the ground foundation but the ground tiles. Ground tiles can only be placed on the ground and nowhere else. A player can place a ground tile next to an existing one, however, there can be no more than six ground tiles in play at the same time. Normally, players place one tile in their turn, but players can place two tiles in one turn if they are adjacent and if they are of the same material. So on my turn, I place this cheap tier here and also this cheap roof on top of it. Similarly, my opponent can place this old tier tile over here and another one next to it. The tier tiles of modern and cheap materials can extend to the sides, but only when placed next to tier tiles of the same type. For example, I can place this cheap tier tile over here and extend this building sideways as it's next to another cheap tier tile. This is only for the tier tiles of cheap and modern materials. So remember, roof tiles or tiles of old material cannot extend sideways in any circumstances. A structure will stand as long as its foundation holds. So when you will be placing tiles and increasing the weight a ground tile can take, this is where it gets more interesting as you will be getting collapses. When the total weight that a ground tile is holding is higher than what it can carry, the whole structure will collapse. The entire vertical line falls downwards and will be removed from the game. However, when you have tiles extending towards the side, then you count that as well towards the total of the weight in the structure. But in that case, when the tiles are falling, the side extension tiles might fall onto other ground tiles or tier tiles and stay there. During a collapse, a tile might fall on top of a roof. When that happens, the roof tile is crushed and removed from the game. So this can be part of your strategy, opening new opportunities for construction or even simply, if you are the saboteur, you can remove a tile this way that can make a difference between the contractor's win or loss. Placing supporting tiles below existing structures can mitigate the potential risks of collapse. So let's see the following example in which the old ground is close to its maximum carry capacity. Then if you add a tile here, it might solve a potential structural collapse. Now the weight of this vertical column is transferred vertically to this one. However, be careful, under no circumstances can a tile be placed directly above a roof tile. If you place one or two tiles in your turn and you form a group of three or more adjacent tiles of the same material, you've done a combo. This allows you to immediately take a tile from your opponent and place it on the table. So you take this tile and add it here, which creates another combo. However, you can only add a bonus tile from your opponent only once per turn, so this second combo cannot grant you another tile. To mark the combos that have been consumed, so you don't gain combos from those tiles in later rounds, you should mark them with some sort of tokens. You can use anything you like from buttons to coins. I use these cubes 
but the boxed version of the game might contain some special tokens. One important thing about the combos is that before adding the bonus style from your opponent, you should check for structural collapses. What looks like a combo might not be a combo after a collapse. Like here, for example, I added this tile which makes three adjacent old tiles, but it causes the structure to collapse as it's too heavy, so no bonus for me. So these were the seven rules you should always follow in Construction Boom. There will be times, though, that you won't be sure about how the weight should be distributed. Arched structures can be complicated. Let's suppose we have this structure and we add this tier tile over here. The cheap tier tile cannot connect to the roof tile, so the weight is distributed like this. If this tile was a tier tile as well, then it could have been an extension of the other cheap tier, which means that it could belong to either structure. In cases like this, the saboteur will decide which ground tile should carry the weight of the contested tile. When both players pass consecutively or when they run out of tiles, then the building is considered finished the round is over and we move on to the scoring. In our example, the contractor had promised three old tiles. We look at the finished building and we count exactly three old, so the contract was fulfilled and the contractor receives 30k euros. This is the amount any contractor receives for fulfilling a contract. If the building had more old tiles, let's say five, then that would mean that the contractor not only fulfilled the contract, but also exceeded the expectations. For each extra tile above the amount set in the contract, the contractor received an additional 10k euros. So if you exceeded the contract by two tiles, then you'd receive 30k from the contract plus 20k for the two extra tiles, so that makes 50k overall. But what happens if a contractor fails to fulfill the contract? Then in this case, they will get a penalty for each tile missing to fulfill the contract. However, penalties vary depending on the material of the contract. For each cheap material below the contract, the contractor has to pay 10k euros. For each modern, they have to pay 15k, and the old ones are more expensive, costing 20k euros each. So if I fail to fulfill my contract of five all tiles having two tiles missing, I will end up paying 40k. This may be easier to remember if you're related to the bidding in the beginning of each round to get the contract. Bidding for old materials is always lower, so failure to deliver the contract costs more. And of course, if the saboteur had doubled the contract, this might result to a big penalty or to a big fat reward for the contractor. So this was Construction Boom. It's a small and simple game in terms of components, but with lots of replayability and strategic depth for those of you who are looking for a tight and competitive two-player game that you can also easily take with you anywhere. Let me know if you have any questions about the rules and make sure to check out the website for their free print and play version and also for updates for the Kickstarter for the box version. Thank you very much for watching everybody and I'll see you in the next video.